healing, salvation, and happiness. It's your season. It's your time. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us and learn how God's love and power can bring hope and happiness to your life. This is your opportunity for motivation, encouragement, and purpose. Welcome, church family. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network, where we bring you the Lord's Word every day from some of the country's most inspiring churches and pastors. And today is no different. Let's check out one of the newest members of the Daily Gospel Network. We want to share with you, yeah, and your family, family. the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God with one touch in our streets. We're touching hearts and changing lives with oh, one touch in our streets. We're here for you right now. Hey everyone, thank you again for joining us right here on the Daily Gospel Network. You are watching the One Touch Ministry broadcast with myself, Pastor Shani Young, and herself, Prophetess Naditra Young. God bless everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm telling you, I love this man right here. He is so hilarious. And God is so good to us. And we're just so glad that we have the air of opportunity to be with the Daily Gospel, connect with them, yes. and to be able to share what God has given us um, through this wonderful network. And we just praise God for it. Yes, and I honestly don't know how she puts up with me. I'm telling you, I am so silly. <laughs> so goofy i don't even know how god even anoints me sometimes because he anoints me in my goofiness i don't know why and yes. stuff just fly off the shelves and next thing you know next thing you know i'll be preaching about it yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and so you know and i give all praise honor and glory to god about that right. and on today we want to talk about children we want to talk we're going to talk about children but the lord was actually showing me as we was preparing for this also a little different twist so hopefully we get a chance to get to it yeah but uh, right now i want to congratulate all of the um wonderful young men and young women who have started back going to school Ooh. amen yes. some some of them have returned back to in-person learning some of them are doing yes. hybrid learning yes. and some of them are doing still doing virtual so i know for ourselves our daughter she did not like the virtual learning and <laughs> I, I had to shift my eyes a little bit because honey she did not like it at all yes. she is um, although she still made honor roll i was so proud of her that still made honor roll she did she still made got good honor grades roll. and everything and tell you she's she's amazing she's an amazing she, she, she really is i I'm am so good. grateful let me just take a second out and go just brag ahead. on my baby go just ahead brag on your bit. baby you know i am so grateful to god that she is vibrant mm -hmm. she's smart she's funny she's quiet mm -hmm. very quiet but she still has a wonderful personality and i praise god because I go back to when I was pregnant with her mm -hmm. and I was going through so much and I was going through depression and I did not know about it Wow! because you know being a PK kid being that pastor's kid you know church folk don't talk about depression yeah and I actually heard somebody recently you know they were doing their um they were streaming live for the church mm -hmm. and they was just like yeah if you you know you trust god you ain't gotta go to no therapist mm. and i was just like well that doesn't mean that you don't trust god if you do go to a therapist come on that's right it doesn't mean anything it just means that you just need some extra help yes. and it's nothing wrong with going to a therapist yes and it's nothing wrong i i mean i don't believe god would have made doctors and made therapists and people for you to connect with that, that can so help you through true. your your struggles had you know I, I i just don't believe he would have made that mm -hmm. 
if it was a bad thing. You know, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong for thinking that. I'm not saying this is the Holy Ghost or anything like that. This is just my own personal feeling mm -hmm. because I went through depression. Right. And I had nobody to talk to. And them same sanctified Holy Ghost filled people, mm -hmm. five baptized and prophetic and God speaks to them. They carry the nine, the ten, the twelve, and the thirteenth gift. You know, oh, all of goodness. that. <laughs> yes. Didn't nobody know that I was depressed. Wow. Nobody, they didn't know. I said, well, where was your Holy Ghost then? Like, yeah. where was the prophetic then when I was facing depression? Mm -hmm. I mean, taking pills, trying to kill myself. I'm pregnant. Wow. I'm pregnant. I'm not like, I didn't know I wasn't pregnant. No, I was full-blown pregnant. Right. You know, and I would sit up all night long and just rock back and forth, rock back and forth and cry. Mm. And at the time, her dad would come out the bedroom because I would stay in the living room for days. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. sit in the living room and, and he would be like, what is wrong with you? But we was in church. We were surrounded by Holy Ghost filled people. Wow. And nobody knew that I was depressed. All they saw was this, and then they saw me being angry, so that I was labeled as angry, frustrated. Mm -hmm. So I just praise God because I got through that depression, even yes. though I was pregnant, and my baby wasn't affected yes. by my depression. Yes. She wasn't affected by that. When I, and that's why sometimes I just look at her and I have to always tell her how proud I am of her because she's yeah. accomplishing things and yes. she's a um, she's working on her per, her business and I'm just Come like on. God she's only 14 yes. and I'm like Lord she the bomb mm -hmm. I look up to her and I tell her I said when I was 14 I said I wish I could have did some of the things that you're doing now at 14 the girl travels. Yes. She goes all over. Yes, she does. Okay? Yes, she done she been does. on the airplane. She done mm -hmm. she done been everywhere. And I said at 14, you know what I was doing? I was churching. Yeah. I wasn't exploring life. I didn't know what it was to be a teenager, but I knew what it was to work inside the church. Wow. Yeah, so Yeah. So when it comes down to cuz you're saying about the therapist, you mm -hmm. know, um people are against therapists and and stuff of that nature. With that, in that case, you need to be against doctors. Because God placed doctors on the earth so that they could perform the surgeries and things Come or pres pres prescribe the prescriptions that we need so that we can get better, so we can be healed and everything else. Yeah. And so, yeah, absolutely. I understand where you're coming from with that. Yeah, that's why I don't, I, I don't get it. Like, we as people of God, mm -hmm. we need to stop being, to me, like dumbfounded when it mm -hmm. comes down to certain things. We need to be more educated. You know, because, see, you can go find a therapist that is saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and fire baptized because they got Christian counselors. Yes. I am a master life coach. I am a <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> I am a Christian. Master life coach right here. <laughs> exactly. I am a counselor. And I help women and men all day. I help young people all day yes. long. And I love, when I say I love my job, I love my job. Because yes. if I had a me mm -hmm. to help motivate me to be where I am today, mm -hmm. do you not know I would be so much further in my life? Yes. If I had a me. Mm -hmm. Like, if I had a person like me that was pushing me. Yes. Now, Dietra would have been, like, really far out there, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't know if we would have met or not because it really, I, I just wish to God I had a me in my corner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because I feel like now, you know, I'm doing all the things. And I, I'm grateful for my husband because Hallelujah. this man, because I'm a visionary, this man will hear a vision that I'm giving him. He will do all he can to push me into the vision mm -hmm. and if he does not have the 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 method or he doesn't know how to do something he will research and then he will go find the people for me mm -hmm. and say here they go mm -hmm. and drop them right in my lap and say now take that vision and work it mm -hmm. and this is what i love about our relationship this is what i love about our marriage and this is what i love about raising a child with you because mm -hmm. you really push my daughter, he pushes my daughter. Yes. He pushes me. You know, I have several businesses. Like, 
I just I, she has several business and business ideas. Yes, <laughs> and it's like I have yeah I have what one two three I have three businesses right now. Um, shameless plug. I am about to be a book author. Yes. Come November 20th, yes. my book is coming out. And I'm telling you, it's going to be amazing and it's going to heal. And actually, oh, glory to God, I feel something right now. Now I think I feel my help <laughs> fit to come on up on me right now. But just real fast, you know, I just really, really feel like it's going to be something that pastors and leaders and just people of God, anybody can teach out of. Mm. I feel that, and I, I speak that over my life that my book will be a part of the curriculum in uh, in colleges and universities. Wow! Be a part of curriculums in schools, so our young people won't have to face depression at a young age. Mm -hmm. That our families and our children, our children won't feel like they have to be the mom and the dad in the household. They yes. don't feel like they have to be the one to carry an adult. Adult responsibilities. Yes. Ooh, shot. Yeah. Yes. And that's one of our issues our children are facing. They are carrying adult issues. They are carrying adult responsibilities for no apparent reason. Mm. And shame yes, on you, are. mommy. Shame wow. on you, daddy. Yeah. If you make those kids have to get your kids up. For school. Ha Shandaria Basa. Shame on you, mommy and daddy. If you feel like you have to make your oldest child be the one that have to clean up behind the little ones and feed the little ones and take mm -hmm. the little ones to school. Uh, I got stuff to do. I gotta go to work. No, that was your pleasure. That was your responsibility. Not that oldest child. Not that middle child. Because that's the problem. These young people feel like they have to grow up way too fast. And then wow. when they start dipping and yes. dabbling in adult issues and adult uh, 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 things, then we get mad at them and then we call them unruly. Then we call mm -hmm. them stupid and dumb. Then we mm -hmm. call them, uh, uh, they tell them that they don't know anything. They're too grown. Why, 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 why are they too grown? Mm -hmm. Because why? You made them too grown. Yeah, I can just as you was just talking about that, I was remembering a time when, um, me and my brother was, no, my brother had did something bad. Brother had did something bad and, because, you know, I was supervised. I guess you say supervised at the time. But, you know, mm -hmm. I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. You know, but a lot of times kids do what they see that Come were on. done as far as form of Come punishment. On. Come on. So I remember, like, I called myself whooping my brother or something like that or whatever. Uh -huh. And so then um, when I got home, you know, my brother told or whatever. And I said, yeah, I did it. Because, you know, he was being bad. Uh -huh. And my mother was like, uh -huh. Come you on. are not the parent. Come on. You are the older brother. You are not allowed to whoop your brother. That is our job. And if Come we on. find Come it on. where we that he needs a spanking that's our job to do. You come are on. a child. Only thing you're supposed to do, y'all supposed to come home. That's it. You're supposed to do your homework. Supervise. You can watch TV and everything else, but you are not to that's punish come on. your brother. Come on. And see, that's a lot of sometimes a lot of things that uh the the older that the older kids would do exactly. and the parents will allow them yeah. to be able to punish yeah. the old yeah. the, the, the younger child i was raised that way like okay so i have several older sisters and brothers so i have uh three five brothers and sisters that mm -hmm. are older like not a little bit older like years and years older than me mm -hmm. so i'm the baby girl so I have a brother that's under me. So by the time I turned 13, everybody was gone. Mm -hmm. By the time I hit 13, nobody was in the house but me and my baby brother. Mm -hmm. And my parents had me getting him up for school, helping him do this. By the time I, I started driving and I had my brand new car and I had to go to parent-teacher meetings. I'm 18 years old. I don't have no children. I didn't even have the desire to even have a baby, okay? So, like, I, I was growing up way too fast. I was yes. taking him back and forth to school, picking his homework up. Like, I had too much responsibility mm -hmm. as a young person. And do you not know I despised children mm -hmm. for years? Wow. I hated kids. I didn't like kids. And I know hate is a strong word, but that's the strong word that I was using. I hated children. Mm -hmm. I dislike. It took me until I was 27 years old to have a child. And that was wow. really by accident. Oh, Lord. That was by accident. <laughs> I got 
got pregnant by accident. I was married, but you know, we weren't trying, and mm -hmm. it kind of mm -hmm. like just happened. happened. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my god. I'm pregnant? What? Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't know what to do with myself. I was like, my mom is going to kill me. My ex-husband was looking at me. He said, your mother going to kill you. He said, girl, you married. Th that, that's how that's how dumb I was at the time. You know. You was married, have been married, and you full grown woman. <laughs> two steps. Not, not two just, steps from being 30. <laughs> two or three steps from being 30. Not just like 18, 19, or 21. No, I was 27. You was Full grown. I was full grown. Full, 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 full grown. You know what I'm saying? But because the child in me did not get a chance to grow up. Ah, Shandiri Asata. Because the child, the teenager in me, did not get a chance to experience life and grow up. Mm -hmm. And I was taking on adult responsibilities um, way too early. You know, I. My, I never forget when my parents were trying to sell their house. Mm -hmm. I was in the house doing the showing for them mm. with the realtor. Wow. I'm like 16 years old, 16, almost 17 years old. Wow. What, what am I? What am I doing? Help selling a house? I'm responsible of selling somebody else. Mm -hmm. Why? Wait a minute. Why they was in church preaching? Wow. Wow. Do you see what I'm saying? Like this is like so trivial. This is like so. Mm -hmm. This is so stupid. Like yeah. who does this? Yeah. But we don't understand. We put the stain on our kids yes. too early. We put the stain of adulthood growing mm -hmm. up too fast. Yes, wow. we sure do. Wow. I'm sorry, Pastor Shannon. I no, just you good. You kinda, good. You know, just flowing can, with it. Yeah, because <laughs> I I just don't think it's fair mm -hmm. that we take childhood from our children. Yeah. We don't give them an opportunity to be young. Mm -hmm. And that's the repair. So I was going to say, I was just going to introduce and say, you know, hey, we have to repair and restore our, our children. Yes, sir. Because, you know, there's, there's a lot of hurt with children in this generation. There's a lot of things that they're taking on. A lot of stuff yes. we, we never even had to experience as being youth and children. Oh, and a lot wow. of things that you guys... Um, that's watching us today never had to experience not even think about you know and so a lot of um, uh, programs and schools and stuff nowadays they're yeah. they're teaching so much stuff that's against forget just biblical stuff just uh, yeah. the natural order of things yeah. and you know we have to be those people to be able to teach our children Amen. correctly teach them about God's way teach them about the natural things of, of right. order in life yeah. And a lot of these kids nowadays, if you have a child anywhere between 8 to 18, you know, they look at stuff on TikTok and they think that that's what's supposed to right. be TikTok is the raising natural our children. order. Yeah. yeah, they're raising our children. <laughs> and we don't take the time out to sit down and have home-cooked meals. Come on, home-cooked meals. Home-cooked meals and sit at the dinner table. Come on. You know, these kids don't even know how to set a table. Let alone some some home cooked meal and sat you, down. Come on, when I preaching. was a, when I was a, um, a a foster father, I would say out of five of my kids, three of them never had a sit down family dinner. See, never had a sit down family. So I made it a requirement that every single night that I cook dinner, that they had to be in the house, right. and they had to cook dinner. Wow. We had to sit down as a family. And then they, they got their hands dirty with cooking. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, our daughter, she she cooks in the kitchen yes. with us. Or mm -hmm. she's cooking with my husband. Yes. And, you know. She's prepping. And I prepping. did the same thing right. with, with, with them. Right. And sometimes I, I mean, we let I her do prep. it. Yeah. I taught them how to cook. I remember so... <laughs> wait. So, I remember... Um, because I took on teenage boys when I was a single parent, foster father. And I remember two of my boys, they told me, they said, well, what we need to learn how to cook? I'm just going to get me a, a, a woman that's going to cook for me. I was like, that's what you're saying right now. That's what you think. That's right. But that's what's not going to happen. You better learn how to fry this chicken yourself. Come on, come on. You better learn how to make all this, all this spaghetti and meatballs and, and yes. everything else yourself. Because you saying that right now, but you ain't going to have no woman that's going to be that's uh, right. always want to <laughs> cook clean and wash everything for you. You better know how to wash your own clothes. 
Yep. <laughs> and we, we let our daughter, she washes her own clothes. She separates them. Mm -hmm. We teach her, you know, you need to separate. We need to show you how to separate. So we showed her how to separate. We showed mm -hmm. her how to work the wash machine and walk, um, uh, work the dryer. Mm -hmm. And we let her know, listen, you need to keep things clean. We, we talk to her. Keep the bathroom clean. When you go in the bathroom, make sure you clean up behind yourself because make sure it's presentable for the next person that comes behind yes. you. You know, we teach. These are different things, and these are just regular home little little things that we need to be teaching our children how to clean up behind themselves, mm -hmm. how to wash dishes, mm -hmm. not dishwasher. Yes. I said dishes. Yes. Okay, wash the dishes. Learn how to set the table. Learn how to wash the dishes, dry them, and put them away. You know, mm -hmm. uh, different things that's important because we want these children to understand these are the things that you're going to use in life. You need to yes. take these little things with you. And, mm -hmm. you know, older, you're not going to have no maid. You're not going to have right. that maid service. You need to know how to make a bed. Yeah. Yeah, learn how to do. make a bed. Yeah. Yep. You sure this stuff do. is important, you mm -hmm. know? And, and and stop making them feel like they have to be the mom and the dad in the household. And, you know, even with children who see parents who have addictions, mm -hmm. drug addiction, alcohol addiction, they're always the ones that are taking care of their parents. Yeah. And it's like, wow, why do you want to put your child through that mm -hmm. trauma? Because trauma can cause your children. And this is why a lot of our youth who, when they finally do go to college, they go off to college. Mm -hmm. I've been studying about the young people who have nervous breakdowns mm -hmm. go into depression at an early age. Yeah. They, they become schizophrenia mm -hmm. um, at a very, very early age in their mm -hmm. 20s while they're in college. Wow. This is why they're in college. Yes. They have they have anxiety attacks. They become overwhelmed. Yes. Um and they everything is oh cuz I I got to get an A. I got to I got to I got because you know what you're doing and then I I don't like when parents are jumping on the wings of their children. We want you to become the basketball player, the star so you can mm. get mommy and daddy out of the hood, Come on. buy us yeah. a new house. Yeah. Yeah. How dare you as a mother and a father put that responsibility on your son or your daughter mm -hmm. to make them buy you a house let them be willing to buy you a house wow. you have no right oh we want you to make it so you can bring the family out of the hood come on how yeah. dare you do these to these children mm -hmm. these children don't deserve that no you should let them make it on their own so they can bring themselves out of the hood and if you want to come out the hood go get a job wow. and get yourself together and get your own self out of the hood come on i did it and if i can do it i know you can do it too wow my husband will tell you wow. when he met me yeah. i had and i had because i worked mm -hmm. and when i couldn't get to work you know what i did i walked mm -hmm. i walked to work I walked. I made sure I never had a job that was so far away that I could not walk. Mm -hmm. Because I always looked at it as, just in case if my car breaks down, mm -hmm. just in case if I don't have a vehicle, how can I continue to take care of me and my child? So those are the things that we had to do. I never made, I told my daughter, I said, listen, you have to learn. I want you to just be a kid. Yes. Be a kid. Mm -hmm. To this day, she is a kid. Yes. Okay? She doesn't yes. take on... Uh, and we share things with her because she likes to know. Mm -hmm. Now, she is a kid that is very newsy. Mm -hmm. She's very, very newsy. She likes to know. Mm -hmm. But we make sure we... Um, we explain things to her, but we let her know it's not her responsibility to take care of it. Right. So, yes. I'm sorry, Pastor Shannon. You have a scripture. <laughs> and I done took over. I apologize. But no, I just want to come down to my babies. I love yeah. children. When I come down to the babies, mm -hmm. I don't hate kids anymore. I love kids. Now. Yes. <laughs> yes, she does. She loves yeah. her daughter. They have just like this awesome relationship <laughs> and everything else. And so one of the things that <clears throat> I just wanted to point out with the few minutes that we have left is that we also have to teach our children that they are children of God. And that we have to understand that we're also children of God as well. God. And so once they, once you get to, get a chance to learn and understand that, I'm telling you, life will become so much better, and and it's like a whole new light will come about. So in Romans chapter eight, and I'm just gonna start at verse fifteen. I really want to start further than further up than this, but I just want to drive this point home really quick. 
It says, so you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. And so I know a lot of times, you know, the fearful slave. So a lot of times fear grips our hearts and that's how we become slaves. Because we don't understand who we are in God. Come on, come on. And so we become um, uh, slaves to fear if we don't understand and know who we are and whose we are. Okay? Ooh, so <clears throat> instead of receiving, uh, instead you receive God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now remember I said that I was a foster parent for over five years and I had about, I had more than five kids, but five kids for sure lived in my house for an extended period of time. And one of those kids actually asked me to adopt them. That means everything that I had, anything I own, they have ownership of it. And he said, so now we call him Abba Father. So God has um, raised us as his children. We accepted him into our lives. Come on. And he accepted us into his life. Come on. And so we call him Abba Father. Abba, Abba in the original uh, in original language means father. So this is actually saying father, father. Father, father, father. <laughs> so we're calling him father. We call him father twice. And a lot of times when you see double, something that's double in scripture, yeah. it has so much a powerful effect. And I wish I had time to go over that. <laughs> but listen, it says here in verse 16, it says, For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm. We have to affirm with our children yeah. who they are. You have to, I see my wife do this all the time. She always pour into her daughter, pour into our daughter, pour into our daughter, who she is That's and it. where she's going to Come in on. her life. Come on. And so it says, for his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are children of God. You better preach, sir. We are children of God. That's it. We are owned by Abba Father himself. Yeah. And so then that means that we are heirs to the, and the matter of fact, the next scripture says this, and since we are his children, uh -huh. we are his children. Uh -huh. This is enough to shout about right here. Yeah, yeah, since yeah. we are his children, we are heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. Mm, mm. Mm. We are heirs of God's glory. So that means you get the glory as well. You get the glory. You can get glory as well. Glory can sit on you. It can rest on you. It can fall on you because it's coming from the Father. Yes. You you own. You have you have ownership. Of yes. It. Like you said, something happens to you. Your son gets. Yes. Our son gets. Yes. What was yours? Right. So you left a legacy. Left a legacy. All right, I'm done. Wow. <laughs> so Listen, I wish we had more time to go into this, but yeah. we'll get a chance to talk about this at another time. Listen, yes. make sure that you tune in every single Friday at 1.30 p.m. Yes. to uh, the One Touch Ministry broadcast with myself, Pastor Shannon, with my wife, Prophetess Naditra Young. And let me tell y'all something. This broadcast is so amazing, yes, and we so thank each and every one of you. At the bottom of the screen, you see our website and our email address. Make sure you contact us, yes. and we'll love to hear from you. Any last words, honey? No. God bless you, and we love you. We love you. Thank you so much. For more information on today's Spotlight Church, visit them on the internet and follow them on social media. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network. And until next time, remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.